Hello everyone, welcome to Nerdy Talking. I'm a nerd and today I will be showing you how to implement a very simple top-down movement system. Okay, let's start by creating a new empty game object. We call it player and we will make sure that the position is set to zero. So right click in transform and reset position. After that, we create another game object inside of player and we will name it sprite. This game object is where I'm going to put all the sprite for the character. Now for the sprites, uh, I will be using a sprite sheet that I got from an RPG pack. So let me create a folder. I will name it sprite. And let me grab the sprite sheet. I will leave you the link in the description if you want to use the same sprite. Here is the sprite sheet. We are just going to drag the file inside of our sprite folder. For the import settings, I'm going to set the sprite mode to multiple, filter mode to point, and the compression to now. And now we open the sprite editor, and I'm going to slice it in 32 by 32 uh, cell size sprite. If you need more, more details on how to import sprites, please let me know in the comment section and I will do an entire tutorial on the topic. For now, I'm just going to apply the changes and I will change the pixel per unit size to match the sprite size. Apply. And now we can choose one of the sprites. I think I will go with this one, the middle one. So let me drag it inside of the sprite uh, game object that we created before. And just let me change the camera size. I will set it to nine. I think that's good. Uh, for the color, I'm going to use uh, a green. This looks good. Let me run the project to see how it looks. Okay, this looks good. So let's go back to the editor. I will go to the player game object and I will create the script for the movement. So just add a new component. I will name it player controller, new script, create an add. Uh, as always, to keep things organized, let me create a folder. I will name it scripts in this case and just drag the script inside of this folder. And perfect, we are good to start writing some code now. So just open the script. In my case, I will be using Rider as a editor, but you can use whatever you want. And I will start by creating a private vector2 variable named movement direction. I will also create a method called process direction and inside of this method we are going to handle all the logic related to the, the direction of the movement. Now we will take the movement direction variable and we will assign it a value, in this case a new vector2 and as a parameter I'm going to pass the input.getAxis horizontal for the x axis and input dot get axis vertical for the y. If you're not familiar with the input system from Unity, you can check it by going back to the Unity editor. It is located inside of Edit, Project Settings. You have the input section here and inside the section you have all the axes. In my case I have 18 but you can add whatever you want. And in here basically you can map uh, whatever key that you want to an axis. In this case for the horizontal I have the left and right arrows, also the A and D keys. For the vertical I have down and up also as an alternative S and W. So every time that you put, uh, that I press any of these keys, I'm going to get the value from minus one to one. I also have a horizontal and vertical axis for the joystick. So those are mapped to the axis from the sticks in the gamepad. 
Uh, this way, if you use the input.getAxis, we don't have to worry about changing anything if we move from the keyboard to the joystick. And uh, we just use the, the same code. If you want more information on the input system, I can make a tutorial, so let me know in the comments. Now back to the player, I need to add a rigid body. So click on the player, add new component. We will search for rigid body 2D. I will make it kinematic so it is not affected by gravity. And now we just need to go back to our script and use this rigid body component to make the player actually move. So in order to do that, let's go back to the script. We need a reference to the rigid body. I will name it RB. And in the start method, I'm going to assign the value RB equals to get component of type rigid body 2D. This way we will get a reference to the rigid body component and we can use it now to process the movement of the player. To do that, we just need to create a new method. In this case, I will name it move. And inside of this method, I will get the reference to the rigid body and I will change uh, or I will assign its velocity to be equal to the movement direction that we got from the previous uh, method. We just need to call these two methods. So inside of the update method, we will call first the process direction and then the move method. Now we go back to the editor to test. I hit play. And as soon as I start moving, I can see that the player is moving, but it's moving really slow. So we need to speed this up. In order to make it faster, I'm going to add a new variable. I will make it serialize so we can change it from the editor. So serialize field, private followed, and let's name it uh, movement speed. That's right. Now I just need to get the movement direction vector and multiply it by the movement speed and time dot delta time. I'm not going to go into the details of time delta time. All you need to know for the moment is that this is going to help us have a smoother movement and it is not going to depend on the frame rate since the update method is called on each frame. If you want to know more about this topic, just let me know. But for now, let's go back to the editor and let put, let's put a value for the movement speed. I will start with 300. Let's hit play. And now we see that the player moves a lot faster. But now I can feel that the movement is not uh, very responsive. It has a bit of delay. And in order to fix that, we just need to go back to the code and change the get axis for a get axis row. So now, as soon as the player moves in any direction, we will get a value of one or minus one, depending on the direction. And this will result in a more, let's say robotic movement, but movement that is more similar to this kind of RPG or top-down games. So let's test it. And I can see that the player movement is more responsive now but there is still something strange going on. And the way to fix this is to call the movement method inside of the fix update instead of the update. The explanation for this is that we are using the rigid body dot velocity. Um, whenever you are working with physics uh, or physics calculation, you need to use the fix update method to get a, a better result. Once again, I'm not going into the details about update and fix update. If you want more information, just let me know and we can create a video on that topic. For now, let's go back to the editor, hit play. 
And now I can see that the movement is actually working pretty well. There is just one small thing that we need to do before we finish. And I don't know if you are going to be able to tell, but if we move in a diagonal, the movement speed is faster than if we move in a straight line. Let me show you. This is in the straight line, and when I move in diagon diagonal, the movement speed is greater. This has to do with the way that we are getting our inputs. When we have the two axes, we have a vector of one and one. And a very fast way to solve this is to normalize the vector. So we will add dot normalize to the movement direction vector. And now uh, if we hit play, we will see that we can move at the same speed, no matter the, the direction that we're moving. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any suggestion or any question, please let me know in the comments. I will do my best to answer all the questions. And as always, if you like it, please consider subscribing to the channel.